Hey, this is Aaron Lee from Y&T, and you are watching CMS TV. Chris Aiken presents, and I, of course, am Chris Aiken. And today on the show, we are going to be chatting with one of my favorite guitarists out there today. I can't even believe I'm going to say this, but it's been 20 years since we've um, since we first learned of Firewind. And Firewind, as the as the album says very prominently, they are still raging. And here to talk all about the raging work of Firewind is the mighty Gus G. Gus, how are you, sir? Oh wow, I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Thanks okay. for the nice intro. Well, dude, I, I I've told you this before, man. I I, I love what you do, and, and you know whether and it doesn't even matter which band. I love Night Rage. One of my favorite bands of all time is is Dream Evil. I love the the book of heavy metal. Is is just wow. one of my once a month albums because it's so <laughs> anthemic and so fun. <laughs> and and then obviously Firewind is just a guitar blitz every time. I mean. Right I know you hear it a lot that you're a great guitar player, but you really are a great guitar player in a lot of styles, man. It's really good. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate sure. it. Well, man, let's talk Still Raging. Uh, live live release, uh, live video. I, I did have the chance to watch the video as well as listening to the uh, the digital version, I guess, or the MP3 right. version or whatever we call it. Um, yeah. It's fantastic. And I... I think for fans, fans are going to love it. I think you know that. But I think this is a really good release for people that still have not come on to Firewind because you really get the full breadth of what you do. You know, longer set list. I'm assuming it's from two or three shows. So why don't we start there? Tell us a little bit about Still Raging. Sure, man. Yeah. Um, interesting way to put it, actually. Yeah, I uh, I will agree with that. It's kind of a cool like not only like for the diehard fans but it's probably a good uh product if you're like just uh getting into the band or just sure. getting introduced to the band because first of all it's like a best off set list so you get a little bit of everything from our past um uh, and yeah i guess uh i mean the story behind this is like this this was recorded last year Mm -hmm. uh i think it was october 1st 2022 so we're still looking at like a it was still like the the end of that pandemic sure uh you know it was a time where some countries still had restrictions we did this we filmed this show here in my hometown in Thessaloniki, in greece the restrictions have had just been you know uh have lifted. just gone away yeah right. they were lifted so everybody was kind of like going nuts <laughs> like everywhere else in the world sure, you know, they sure. were just but um yeah we had come off uh an american tour and a bunch of festivals shows and uh yeah we were just going to originally like you know we were not going to do anything more than um just a vinyl reissue of the debut album which we did last year mm -hmm. um and then just a couple of like shows in greece in our hometown and in athens just to celebrate the band's 20th anniversary as as a recording band sure uh that, that was the whole idea really and then the idea came up to film this and we were lucky because um we have some friends here uh that are you know close they're like 
like like family to us and they're the guys that did our dvd back in the day like 15 years ago so it was the same film crew and they approached me and they said hey why don't we just film this we'll okay. just send our crew down there we'll set up and then we'll we'll do this you know and um you can do whatever you want with it later nice. so originally there was no plan to do a blu-ray release or a dvd or whatever there was just no plans for it okay. and then all of a sudden we ended up with this amazing you know high quality you know uh i think it was nine or ten camera crew there right um so we ended up having this footage in our hands and uh, i put up a couple of videos on my youtube channel and then i thought you know what why don't we just try to do something special with it why don't we you know so i approached the label i, I talked to afm records and i said hey we have this you know how about mm -hmm. doing something with it so that's that's the whole story behind this release yeah Okay, was there uh was there a specific connection to the uh to the Principal Club Theater? I I know that that you've done a you did a live release there before, but was it just because of that or do you look at it as like your hometown hub that you like to do stuff at? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um it was like I said, it, I, we always played the Principal Club Theater. It's a place that I love. I grew up here. I've I've played we played many, many times. Um I know the guys are the owners very well and uh, they always treat us great. And uh, like I said, it just happened that the film crew was based here as well. And they're really close friends of ours and they came up with the idea of doing this. Uh, other than that, I wouldn't have, it wouldn't have crossed my mind to, because okay. we actually, like, like I said, 15 years ago when we did live premonition, it was also recorded at Principal Club Theater, right. but it was at an older location. It was not the same club. Okay. Same, I mean, same club, same management, but different venue. Um, so I, I didn't think, I, originally I thought, well, you know, releasing a, two live products at the same venue, it's kind of weird, <laughs> but you know, like 15 years later, there's different people listening to the band and uh, maybe people are getting into the band right now. It's good to have something more fresh. We have a different lineup. We're a four right. piece now. We have Herbie in the band. Uh, we have a lot more catalog in our, in our back. So um, yeah, it just made sense. It just made sense to do it, you know? Right on. Well, you mentioned Herbie. I, I definitely wanted to ask you about him. He brings a very different presence to the band and and i you know and i know you know this but for people that are just watching and may not know the history of firewind everybody loved apollo there's no question about that everybody yeah. does everybody did herbie has a different energy but i think he's like uh like a, a booster shot of energy man he's he's very in your face where i think apollo was kind of let the music come to you if that makes yeah. any sense herbie's like Hey, you're not being loud enough. Get louder. You know, he's, he's very in your face. You know, so talk yeah. a little bit about him and how his energy has changed the live performances. Oh yeah. You know, Herbie's a guy who definitely brought, uh, an er a, a type of energy that was needed in the band. You know, it was like, uh, you know, it was, we were in a pretty dark period at the end of 2019, you know, mm -hmm. we lost two members and I was like, well, maybe I should call it a day finally um so yeah i mean you know then i started talking to herbie and i you know not only i love his voice but you know I said, well you know he was we, we, we clicked as people as well so we did that self-titled record in 2020 and then when we started touring i realized that the guy was a beast on stage you know he sure. really loves to get the crowd going he um yeah he's just like a strong presence he has a strong aura on stage that you just cannot he's not the kind of guy you avoid you know when you, when you see him you see him and, and he has a big voice you know like this raspy voice so you know he's uh and he's good at what he does man he's great um and fans love him um people also know him from working with avantasia sure so he's a he's the kind of guy who's who's uh, the last few years he's really been around um yeah, so luckily our fans liked Herbie, you know, for, for a different reason. Like everybody I know, he said love Apollo because those were kind of like the, 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 the golden years of the band when the band was having all this hype and all that. Um, but I think Herbie has convinced a lot of the, of the older fan base and the new people that are discovering us now, they, they, they love him as well. So, so it's been really good. I agree. Well, you know, you, you mentioned that you had thought for a minute about maybe ending the band. And 
I'm guessing that was just a fleeting thought, and I, and I'll tell you why. Because every time you've gone anywhere else, you've never shelved Firewind. You know, when you were in Ozzy, Mystic Prophecy, Dream Evil, all of those bands came, but Firewind was still producing music. You know, you never you never were like, well, I'm in Ozzy now, so I can't do Firewind anymore. You know, you you always kept it alive. Is that just because it's your baby, or is it because, you know, you always just felt the connection that you needed to have that outlet to go back to? Yeah, I think it's primarily because it's my baby. I started when I was 18 years old. Sure. And I'm very emotionally connected to this project, uh, even though it's been through ups and downs, many ups and downs. Um, Yeah, I mean, of course, as I'm getting older, I got tired of all the changes and all the frustrations. But um, yeah, I just came to a point where it was like, I don't know, man, like maybe... Maybe this this is as far as we could go, and um, I think this self-titled record was like a kind of, it could have gone you know it was like fifty fifty if mm-hmm. if it wasn't if it hadn't done well and nobody really liked it, it probably would have been the swan song. That's maybe that was the reason why I also called it just you know it was a self-titled record, mm-hmm. Firewind. It could have been it might as well as well be the last. But at the same time, it was in a, in a way it was also the first album, sure, <laughs> uh, like yeah. a beginning, a new beginning. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, uh, so this this is this is what's happened with that album. Um, but yeah, I think everybody who's been in a band will or is a musician, if they're listening or watching this, they probably know what I mean. You know, they, they sure. everybody com- comes to this type of crossroads at some point where they're like, are they? They're wondering like. Should I go on with this or not? Um, but yeah, at the same time, you're pretty right. Like uh, I always kept uh, this band going, even when I was in Aussie or whatever else I was doing. Sure. Would you? I, I'm I'm just curious on this, just from your answer. What would you do if you ended Firewind? Would you start a new band, or would you be comfortable jumping into somebody else's thing? Or you know, because I don't see that working for you. And, and, you know, even, even with the Ozzy thing, which obviously was great, and I'm sure it was great for you and great money and great attention and all that stuff, it never felt like you were like, and maybe it's just because nobody feels that way when they play guitar for Ozzy except Zach Wilde, you know, that it never felt like you were the guy. It always felt like you were today's guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh just uh, i was never really comfortable in the role of being a hired gun anyway right. so i've always nothing wrong being a hired gun by all means but uh it was just I, I came from a different background different world i'm used to running my own band writing sure. my own songs uh, yeah just just really used to being in the driver's seat uh, so it was a little bit hard for me to understand what is going on in that world you know of mm-hmm. course it was great like i said great exposure everything was amazing but it was really hard for me to kind of navigate through that um and and also it was a little bit short-lived too so i i never really got comfortable in the role so right. and and i you know and i also thought whenever other bands have asked me to join them i've, I've always and i've always kind of like turned all those additions down because I don't think I would probably fit in right. <laughs> another band. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm a guy who can do a job. You know, if I, I can learn sure. parts, like I, I, I learn quickly, I can perform well and all that stuff. But I, you know, it's probably just not um, my natural kind of environment. I'm, I'm better whenever I'm creating my own stuff. Sure. What would I do now? Um, Good question. I don't know because right now I probably would not start a new band in 2023 because the music business is is fucked. Sorry. But, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, like just starting from scratch. And, and you know, Firewind isn't the biggest band in the world either. But, you know, there is something there already. There is sure. some kind of, of value and some, you know, we've worked hard already for 20 years for that little ground that we've gotten. But uh, like starting again from scratch, it would be it would be suicide for me. I mean, I probably would have continued as a solo artist. I, I do solo records. Sure. Um, and uh, I probably would have kept on doing that. 
And who knows? Who knows? You know, I haven't I haven't really made that decision to end Firewind yet, at least. So uh, sure. you know, I feel pretty. I feel I feel pretty good where we're at right now. So we're, yeah, we're still going. Very good. Well, I'll tell you what, man, let's let's take a little break here. We're going to give people some Firewind music to uh, to take a taste of. I'm going to play the video that's up, that just recently put out there for um, Orbital Sunrise. What can you tell me about that video? Well, it's uh, one of the songs of of, uh, of the latest record, the, 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 the latest studio record. And yes, we played it live. It's on the Blu-ray. It's a high energy song. I think you can feel the energy from the crowd as well. So uh, I hope uh, people can enjoy that one. All right. Well, let's check it out now. It is Orbital Sunrise. It is Firewind right here on Chris Aiken Presents. Right back here on Chris Aiken Presents, and I, of course, am talking to the great one himself, Mr. Gus G, talking all about Still Raging, the newest release from Firewind. It's a live release. It comes out September the 1st here in the States and probably everywhere, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Um, And Gus, you know, we, we were talking a little bit about, you know, the history of the band and stuff and the lineup changes. And when you look, when you look back at Firewind, for the very most part, basically for everything except the first record it's been you and petros that have been the kind of core to the band and um yep. you know so what is it about him that he he has stayed or you have stayed with him or probably some of both i'd imagine but what is it about <laughs> you two's working partnership that has kept you and him as the core to the band for what 19 of the 20 years yeah yeah well petros you know he's uh he's been a long uh you know a lifelong friend okay uh i've known him since i was like 16 years old and um he owns a a, a rock bar here in, in the city so we always used to go and hang out in his bar and uh we hung out and then he was playing with some local bands that you know really they they, they split up after a while and then sure. it, when, when i moved back from sweden and i had already had like a record deal in my hand i said look man i'm gonna I'm gonna restructure Firewind and try to make it like based off here, off the, okay. off, the off off Greece, and uh, said I, I would like you to play bass. So, and he accepted, and he's just like a really close friend of mine that has been, um, how should I say, like a great kind of like a follower type of guy, where he's really trusted me on all these decisions, and um, yeah. He enjoys this as much as I do. He he's not involved in the creative process stuff. He just loves to play his bass in his corner. Sure. And that's it. And uh, we're having great times on the road. Yeah. So he's like one of my closest friends. Very good, man. And you have to keep him around so you can get free drinks at the bar, right? <laughs> that too. Yeah. And now he's at now he's at a kitchen, so you know I, I get free meals too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Well, well, Gus, you know, with Still Raging, uh, people are going to get a very good dose of all of the stuff that um, that you play, and you play so well live. For you, is there a song in this list that you enjoy playing the most? And and a follow-up to that is, is there a song that's not on the list that maybe it just doesn't have the notoriety within your catalog, but you wish that you could play in the set? Oh, um, hmm. good question. Um, I mean, there are a lot of songs that we could have played, but we didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there's always this topic, like what should we play and what should we add? And, 
And uh, there's always some fans that say, oh, you never played this one. And that. It's, it's kind of hard to please everybody with that. Sure. Um, I always like enjoy playing the stuff from the latest record because they are the most fresh ones. Sure. So, so on this, uh, on this, in this recording and basically on this last tour, I've really enjoyed doing the stuff from the latest record. Okay. Um, yeah, like Welcome to the Empire and um, Break Away. I, I like playing that song. It's a little bit. It's it's demanding to play live. It's uh, it's te technically demanding. It's sure. uh, there's a lot of. Um, I, you know, I can't hand back, head bang too much. I have to really be careful what I'm playing because there's a lot of technical stuff going on. Um, Rising Fire is a banger. Yeah, so I, I like playing the, the stuff from the right. latest record. Very good, man. Well, dude, I, I, I got to ask, what are, the, what are the future plans? Are you working on material? Or are you just seeing what happens? Where, where are you at right now with Firewind? Yeah, we have just actually finished the oh, new okay. record. Yeah, we have just mastered it. We just actually, a few days ago, I sent it to uh, the label. And uh, now we are at the, at the stage of kind of getting the artwork together. Okay. Putting uh, all the plans in motion for next year. Where are we going to tour? With who? Right. All those things, you know. So it's a lot of stuff that needs to come together. Talking to agents, record labels, all sure. these people, you know, artists, you know, get the videos together, decide on the singles. There's a lot of stuff to be done, but the album is done. And okay. uh, we are really, really happy with it. I, I can't reveal much more info, but no, no, sure. it will, yeah, it will start, uh, we'll start uh, rolling with some new music, I would say, towards the end of the year, like some okay. singles probably. Yeah. Excellent. So safe to say, or obviously not a commitment to say it, but I would say it's a pretty good risk or a pretty good guess that by festival season next year, we'll have a new Firewind release. I think so. Yeah. Probably okay. even earlier. I think we're looking at spring. Okay, great. It's, it's, it's not decided yet a hundred percent, but this is the, the, what I've been hearing like, um, from, from, uh, from the, from the label and, um, yeah, yeah. There's going to be, New fire music very, very soon. Yeah. Very good, man. Well, I'll tell you what, Gus, uh, let's tell everybody what they should buy now while they wait for that one. They should buy this one right here, still raging. It is Firewind. Uh, it's out on September the 1st. Um, mm -hmm. Where should we tell people to go online to keep up with you and buy the record or pre-order and, and all that stuff? Merch. I mean, I don't know when. Yeah, yeah. We, I don't know when this airs, but yeah, the, they can buy this uh everywhere pretty much on all retailers either from afm records shop or on amazon you can order it wherever okay. it's a three the the physical product is a three disc package so one blu-ray plus two cd audio Great. it's all live recorded live there's no bullshitting we this is really us the way we played that night nice. um so we're really proud of that <laughs> <laughs> i hear you yeah. In today's world, you have to, dis isn't that crazy that in today's world, you literally have to say, we did all the playing. It wasn't pre-recorded. You know, it's yeah, crazy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, some of the most classic live albums that we grew up and we love, we heard, we later heard that they were studio recordings, sure. uh, you know, but uh, this one was really recorded that night in Thessaloniki. It's one show. Uh, yeah. It's uh, almost two hours of our career, of our back catalog. So yeah it's it's a cool package it's a it's a nice uh, commemorative package so hope people can enjoy that one man excellent well i figured what we would do gus is we would wrap this up with the video for destiny is calling um you know what to to wrap this one up what what can you tell me about this song well that is one of the songs off uh, the upcoming album uh so it was uh we we kind of like rushed to release that one because we were on a big on a massive european tour earlier this year with sure. um beast in black and uh, we thought, you know, we'd give people uh, a taste of it and start playing something new. Uh, so Destiny's Calling is a, a good uh, first single. Um, we filmed the video of that while on tour. Uh, it was filmed in Munich in Germany. And uh, yeah, it's actually one of my, that, that song I really enjoy playing live nowadays. Excellent. It's got a really nice vibe, yeah. Nice, well, let's check it out right now. It is Firewind, one more time the album is called Still Raging. It is out on September the 1st. And here is a uh, one of the tracks from it. It is Destiny is Calling right here on Chris Aiken Presents. Presents. 